So most of us have been using Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion in order to create AI art or AI avatars or any AI related images in general. But look at these images. These images firstly seem unreal and don't really seem to be connected to a lot of what we have done with uh, Stable Diffusion personally or maybe on Mid Journey, but not on Stable Diffusion per se. Look at these generations. All of these generations were done on Leonardo AI, which is a new AI app or a platform that allows you to use different models and generate super cool imagery like this. In this video, we're going to be exploring everything that you can do in Leonardo AI. The very first thing you need to know is still in beta. So you may uh, want to apply for the waitlist. Once you get in, just have to fill in your username, do a very basic sign up journey, and this is where you'll land. This has a couple of things, right? The first section is the featured models. Let's just jump right into it. Take any image, right? So if you open this image, uh, this was generated by this user. You can copy the prompt. You can do image to image generation. You can also add negative prompts. Or it also kind of talks about um, the resolution when it was created, the sampler used, the base model that was used, and then certain related images with this, right? But the most important part here is the fine-tuned model that was used to generate this, which is the core capability or the uh, one of the most important features of Leonardo AI that it allows you to use fine-tuned model. So this is what I mean when I say fine-tuned model, right? So this specific model was created someone whose name is Expect and is great for photorealism and artistic creations. So if you click on the model itself, you can see uh, there have been 0.4 million images that were generated using the model. And then there are certain examples of the images that were generated. Obviously, a lot of these top images that you see here were created using this deliberate 1.1, uh, which is which seems to be one of the most popular model. But if you look at Leonardo Creative here, this is an alternative fine tune of Sable Diffusion 2.1 that brings a little more creativity and interpretation to the mix. And looks like voice to be one of the highest used models, right? So I can see 1.5 million images that were processed using the model. So the idea being that there are features if you want to make your image more vintage you go ahead and choose this you want to make it look more cute you can choose this and let's look at some examples and see that the images that are more cartoonish in nature or maybe fairy taleish in nature is something that you can generate using luna then there is rpg 4.0 which is good for creating role playing games uh, type of generations per se you can see all of these seem more of fantasy sort of creations right then there is uh, paper art style, illustrations, anime, you name it, right? So this is the core capability. So there's also pixel art, by the way. But this is the core capability that Leonardo offers you right now, is that you can generate art in any style you'd want without actually investing time in order to pre-train your model per se. Now, that said, let's explore the, uh, you know, explore certain features of the Leonardo platform itself. So the first thing we'll be exploring is AI image generation, which is one of the core features of Leonardo AI. Again, I've, you know, I've gone ahead and because it takes a lot of time, gone ahead and, you know, predefined certain generations. And I'm going to walk you through what the difference between each of the model is, right? The reason I pre-did this is because look at this, right? It's been here for like 85,000 seconds now and it's still loading. So anyways, uh, my first generation was using Deliberate 1.1, which is the featured model uh, that allows you to generate better images than Stable Diffusion 1, uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5 or 2.1. And I'm going to prove you why, right? So this 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 is the same prompt. So it says Superman and Lex is what it, this is what it generates, right? Now the same prompt I put in Stable Diffusion 2.1, you can see the model here. And this is the kind of output I get. Now, this is way better than this. Uh, while this has meaning, I can see this uh, specific entity or this person to maybe look as Lex. I don't see any Lex here. Either way, the quality generated here versus the quality generated here, it looks like there's a huge difference, a crazy amount of difference, right? Now, you go step ahead and you choose the Leonardo signature, which is a different model. And these are the results, right? So you can see for the same query itself, this. The kind of results, right? The variations are fine, but look at the lighting, the face features, etc. They look way better in this, which is Deliberate 1.1, compared to the Stable Diffusion 2.1 and the Leonardo signature in Leonardo style. So I went ahead and tried one more image using the Leonardo signature, and you can see it's the style itself is retained, right? The dark uh, contrast of the image is also retained in the image per se. 
So if I were to use this image or I, if I were to use this prompt and generate this using deliberate 1.1, the images or the results would be very different. Now I went ahead and I also tried um, the image to image. So how image to image works is that you click here, you select the image that you want to modify. In this case, I've selected this image. Again, the process is not very different. Uh, you define the prompt on the top here, you select the model, and then you go ahead and select the number of samples, the guidance scale, the step count. A guidance scale is basically how strongly your prompt is weighed. So the more points, I think from 20 itself. So if you have 20, your output will be more aligned with the what input you put in. The lower this, the lower it will focus on the prompt that was given by you. Step count is the number of noise that the image generates before it is rendered. So 50 takes a lot of time compared to 30, but 50 also generates better images and also consumes more GPU, right? Either way, so uh, this is the image we want to upload. Now you have things aligned. So you say cyborg. And I'm going to show you output on how this looks like. So you click on generate and it'll start the generation. Regardless, once the generation is complete, you'll be able to see something like this, right? So in this case, I entered super villain with deliberate 1.1 model, and this is the kind of results it would throw out. My input was similar to the fourth image, and these are the samples. And similarly, I put mage here. Again, the hair looked different on all, you know, most of the images, but the difference is apparent, right? So I used the deliberate 1.1 model here as well. Now here, I just went ahead and I used Leonardo creator model with just the keyword warrior. And this is the kind of output I get. Uh, this is very close to what mid journey does and looks super cool. This guy has a Superman logo here for no reason, but yeah, this is the output. Then I went ahead and, you know, recently queried a warrior on a disco floor. These are the outputs using deliberate 1.1 Leonardo style. You can see how realistic these look, right? I, in order to kind of show you the example itself, a futuristic service app with sleek modern design, vibrant neon glow. These are the uh, kind of mockups that it was able to create from the design standpoint. And finally, our recent image, right, where we said cyborg. You can see they've created pretty cool uh, cyborgish or cyberpunkish images for us to kind of prefer. I wouldn't say these are perfect, but I wouldn't say these are too bad either, right? It's a good start. Man, this looks so cool. Some of these look really weird. Either way, this is about image to image. If you want to just do image to, uh, you know, text to image, you just put the prompt here, select the model you want, and we've kind of walked you through the model itself. Select negative prompt is necessary, and then you generate. So you get two for 250 tokens daily, and you will, every image generation, depending on what, you know, configuration you use, you'll consume tokens. That's it, let's now move on to the prompt generation. Uh, prompt generation is prime, you know, primarily offers you ways to generate prompt ideas. Now I just put in cyborg here, right? What if I wanted to make more detailed prompt on this? Meaning cyborg in a maybe foreign world. So I'll put cyborg foreign world. Unless you put in detailed prompts, you won't be able to kind of generate great images. So let's just ideate some prompts using the model and then use these prompts with the same image to see the kind of difference we get in the output. It's a futuristic st cyborg stands atop of strange alien landscape, surveying horizon. A robotic figure strides through the surreal unknown world in a metallic body. So you can, again, click on generate and it'll go to uh, this side of things in order to generate these images. Again, the goal of prompt generation is to primarily get some ideas. Obviously, prompts are way detailed than this. And, you know, there is a whole video on how prompts work. So if you're interested in learning about prompt engineering, feel free to kind of check the video out. Regardless, you can see the process has started. Similarly, an image will be generated, which can then be used uh, to generate either more samples or just use this as you please, right? So now you click on this image. You can see the original image. You can also kind of edit it in canvas. You can upscale it. So right now the quality of the image is uh, not too well. You can upscale for a better quality. You can remove background. If I click here, it'll remove the background. You can unzoom, zoom image. You can download the image. You can delete the image. So you can see the prompt has been applied here and the you know results are a bit different than what we had generated earlier. But yeah, I think you get the point. So let's now move on to the, uh, the AI canvas. 
what this basically is is a similar version to what OpenAI's DALI offers right now, right? So you have a uh, you know, playground of sorts where you upload the image and you can then create unlimited images or then just mask certain parts of the images in order to do some generations. On the right side here, you can choose which model to use. You can choose 4.1 or 2.1. Choose the number of generation. You can choose the dimensions that you want to generate image in. Guidance scale, which is uh, how strongly your prompt is weighted against the machine itself. So something you can select. Then there is step count. Um, you know, the higher the step count, meaning it will go through more noise in order to generate the final image. Now for this specific case, let's try and upload an image using this image. Um, effectively, what I'm now going to do, there are a bunch of things, right? So there is a draw mask feature where you can draw a mask somewhere on the image, which is also the in-painting side of things that you can find on Stable Diffusion. And you can make custom modifications on what you want to do in that specific region of the image. So let me just quickly mask this. You can increase the brush size in order to improve the speed of masking. Mask the image. Now the next step here is you'll type a prompt. Okay, so I'm saying make me look like Navi from Avatar movie. The generations uh, from what I've noticed usually take time, but let's try this one. So this is the image that is generated. Obviously this is, <laughs> obviously this is not perfect, but you can see that it's tried. Oh man, honestly, it looks terrible but again it's kind of tried its best to bring in the features of avatars i can see eyes are red the image has a bluish texture the lips have aligned etc et now let's try on one more image and on this specific image we'll try to give some other prompt let me quickly draw a mask all right so this is the mask area what i want the model to do is see the kind of results we get so this is the kind of you know output that i get in the model itself Again, this isn't the uh, best output in the world, but you get the idea, you know, about what the model can do for you. I think it's made me look a little more younger. And if I had selected more than one images, I'd be able to toggle between these images. Either way, at this point, um, what you can do in Leonardo AI. Yeah? And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to kind of talk about in this video itself. There are more features that will go live uh, and I'll be more, you know, I'll be actively talking about those features as and when they do go live. So if you like this video, consider uh, subscribing to the channel, drop a like on this video, share this across with a friend and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.